Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today's video about Qantas Airline, not from the safety perspective, but from customer service. What happened recently is um, I typed in, in YouTube search uh, Qantas Airline or Qantas uh, Review and what popped out was economy class, business class, lounges, uh, and all that stuff. And if you start watching those reviews, you immediately understand that they were paid for. They were paid for because they were going smooth, they're describing seating arrangements, they're describing food, everything in hunky-dory. But have you ever tried to deal with airline when things are not going smooth? And I did. Uh, as you can hear by my accent, uh, I'm from Europe and as all my family members are still in Europe, I'm flying every year or every uh, couple of years to Europe. And I'm using different airlines. So far I use more than 15 airlines and uh, with mixed reviews, I'm not here to review all the airlines, but someone asked me, hey, <laughs> you live in the last um, 25 years in Australia, um, why you never fly Qantas? I say, hey, that's real. Why you ever fly Qantas? And I just realized that Qantas was never in my price range. In my mind, Qantas was a premium airline that face of Australia. And to be honest, even if I never flown with Qantas, I was always proud that we've got airline in Australia that in a world scale, so recognizable by a safety record, by literally everything, like everything that you think about Qantas is positive. Until recently that I spoke to someone, one of my uh, good friends, who was a luggage handler for Qantas. And he told me that they were treated really poorly. And while, you know, to form my own opinion, listen to people, but don't jump to conclusions, uh, I say, yeah, yeah, it's really, um, unfair and I could not believe that Qantas treating the employees like that and I moved on and recently had an opportunity to fly to Europe with Qantas. I literally flew three months ago and uh, decided to form my own experience with uh, Qantas as an airline from customer perspective. So let's be honest. This review is not paid by Qantas. <clears throat> I did not engage with the API department. And also this review is my personal take, how I feel as a customer compared to other airlines. So my first experience is uh, going through the uh, buying ticket uh, process. So because I wanted to experience Qantas airline from the inception point to um, end of the kind of journey, I decided to buy my tickets uh, from Qantas.com. Uh, or official Qantas uh, uh, Australia we website. And there were two reasons for that. First, uh, it was just straight after COVID and I didn't want to get stuck. I believe Qantas is a really great representation responsibility, so it's my safety net. And also buying tickets directly from uh, Qantas, I bypass all that middle uh, layer of uncertainty. If I have problem with buying tickets ever, I can talk to Qantas directly. So here's my first point. Have you ever tried to call Qantas? That's unbelievable. I tried a number of times because I wanted to clarify a couple of things. Not even one time I could go through. Uh, it was unbelievable. I was on wait, uh, on, on hold for, um, I think 20 to 30 minutes. I just gave up. Um, try to different meanings there's no way to contact the air airline and why i'm a little bit outraged not because it's supposed to be something um you know uh, unbelievably good uh, in my books the price of Qantas tickets is a premium price right so in my mind the Qantas is a premium airline and it is not the way it's treating its customers it's not I mean, I know the call center stuff cost money, but if you charge three, four, five hundred dollars more for same ticket uh, compared to uh, one of the top airlines, like the Qantas ticket cost five hundred dollars more 
that's Singapore Airlines. It costs $300 more than Qatar and, and others. Airlines that in a world scale considered to be same or better than Qantas in, in, in many sense. So anyway, I couldn't get through customer service. I was like, oh, all right, I'm just giving up. And then a couple of days before flight, Qantas offered me to buy a lounge pass to spend time at the airport before waiting for the uh, uh, boarding. I said, well, that's a great idea. Because of the COVID situation, I want to get to airport earlier. So I said, I'll buy that pass. I spend some time in the lounge, uh, treat myself to beverage and dinner and board on my long haul flight. So here's my first experience with the Qantas airline. I'm getting into uh, Qantas uh, lounge, getting greeted and the lounge pass is not in the system. I say, yeah, but it's linked to my ticket and they couldn't see. So I had to open my interface to show that my lounge pass, that I bought with my own money, linked to my frequent flyer and ticket that I'm just about to board with. It took me like 10, 15 minutes to, to, to prove it. So <clears throat> it's my first customer experience. The so second one is the person says, <clears throat> all right, you can get in, but we're closing lounge in 15 minutes. I'm like, what? Uh, and he said, yeah, well, there's no more Qantas flights, so we're closing lounge. I say, hold on, my flight is in two hours and it's a Qantas flight. He said, no. That's a Qantas flight that joined with Emirates and Emirates uh, basically managing that flight and the Qantas is sharing the code. I say, hold on, I bought my tickets from Qantas website. The, the, my flight is QF, which is Qantas flight. And also I've got pass that you sold me as a, as a company. So I'm treating the person representative of the company. And say, and you tell me that that flight is not Qantas. So no, that's Emirates flight, and um, it's not registered uh, here. So uh, if you are a business class uh, passenger, you can go to another lounge. You can get in for free. But if you got pass, uh, you need to get out, and um, you are we we're not gonna honor the pass. I'm like, well, all right, I'll get in. <clears throat> Um, have a, a bit of dinner and drink and uh, whatever I can do in 15 minutes and then I deal with Qantas when I come back. So they booted me out. Uh, the flight was alright, the flight was actually Emirates flight so uh, I had no any problems so Emirates is actually quite good company and uh, coming back I decided to contact Qantas again. This time around I had a little bit more time, I was on hold for an hour until someone picked up phone and explained my situation about launch pass that you know you charge me a significant amount of money for something <clears throat> that you actually did not deliver and in Australia there's a consumer law that protects you from that exactly scenario where you've been sold something that is not deliverable um, and the person say so um, did you get into the launch I say, no, no, I, the moment I linked the pass to the ticket, the launch pass was used. I say, all right, so we forfeited your uh, launch pass. I say, yes, because I bought it, but I could not use the service. Anyway, we went around in circles and they say, all right, I cannot do anything from my end. There's no pass, I cannot do anything. You need to lodge official complaint. So I did. I went to the Qantas website and soon as I landed, I launched official complaint. Two months later, I still have no response. So I escalated to uh, airline ombudsman. But point of view is, if you think, if you think that you will watch YouTube videos and what you see there, it's what you experience during the flight, during your boarding, during your uh, luggage handling, during the, your lounge. It's all false. And the reason for this video is not say that uh, Qantas is a bad airline. I'm saying when you pay premium price for something that's supposed to be premium airline, you may be mistreated. And this video I'm trying to make point of difference is don't be fooled by all the uh, commercials that are not commercials. There's so much PR going on from Qantas and other airlines departments 
to uh, portray themselves as one of the be best airlines ever. Yes, the Qantas still got really good safety score um, among airlines. Yes, it's still considered to be a spirit of Australia, national airline, which is great. My question is, is it great enough for you as a consumer to spend your extra money on something that you can get better elsewhere? So if you ask me, uh, and, and I'm not saying that it's true or not true, it's just in my books, Singapore Airline, I had much better experience. With Emirates, I had much better experience. With Qatar, I had uh, much better experience. With Etihad, I had much better experience. With Cathay Pacific, I had much better experience. With even Southern China Airlines, I had much better experience. I was treated so well right there. And yet, Qantas that I paid premium, I probably paid for Qantas ticket more than any other ticket I ever flown to Europe just to get that experience. And this video is really about this experience. So I'm not here to say that Qantas airline is bad. I'm just saying when you pay a premium, be ready that you may not get your premium experience. I really hope this video helps someone to form their opinion about uh, who they fly overseas with. And by the way, my review is not domestic. Uh, uh, about domestic route, it's overseas route. I'm not comparing to Virgin Australia, Rex, Scoot, or, or Jetstar, or, or uh, other airlines in Australia. I'm comparing with Qantas overseas leg experience with other airlines. So I really hope that my review was helpful. If you got any questions or concern, or you would like to share your story, please comment down below. If you like this video or any other videos on my channel, please do me a favor, hit like button, subscribe. That will help my channel to grow and share my personal experiences with people like yourselves. Thank you so much for watching. Great from Brisbane, Australia. Until next time.